What's up? It's fall, y'all. I hope you're doing good and enjoying the weather where you live. I just came from a session. I had a great time. We enjoyed some weather, as you just saw. We tracked some vocals. It was beautiful. So I thought, why not make a video about the DAW that we were just using? It's called Pro Tools. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. It is the industry standard, right? So let's go ahead and dive into this. You already know, it is fall, y'all. It is fall, y'all. Pretty soon, things are gonna be changing. The trees are gonna be losing all their leaves. I'm going through some things myself, making some major changes in life. And we're gonna be turning the clocks back an hour. So I thought, you know what? Why not revisit some old songs that I recorded? I wanna show you those recordings, the multi-tracks, how terrible they were, and how I can doctor them up and make those mixes a lot better. But before we do that, it's important to understand the DAW or digital audio workstation that we're working in. It's important to understand those tools so that way when it comes time to show those videos, we can understand the basics. So in today's video, there's a lot to cover. I'm gonna show you the Avid website, how to create an Avid master account. You're gonna to need to get yourself an iLock. So we're gonna to go to iLock.com. Once we have done that, then we'll show you how to create a Pro Tools session, a quick basic lesson in how to store things accurately and properly to your hard drive. We'll be setting up the session, going over types of tracks, a couple things that you wanna have enabled and turned off. I wanna show you some quick gain staging basics, talking about auxes. We'll be recording a few vocal takes I'm gonna do some very interesting things. We'll see how it works out. And then I'll show you how to actually bounce your session and pull it up as an MP3, listen to it on iTunes, and then pull it up where you can listen to it on your mobile device. Like I said, there's a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and get into all of this. The first thing we'll need to do in this process is go to Avid's website. Join me now if you can at avid.com. The first thing we'll need to do is go up here to sign in and then over here, create an account. Just follow the prompts, put in your first, last name, email address. Avid will send you an email. Click on that link. It's safe, it's secure. It just confirms things with them. Once you've done that, it'll take you to this next step here where you can log in. I'm gonna do that now. And then I'm gonna show you my Avid Master account Okay, now that I'm logged in, I wanna show you a few brief things about the Avid Master Account. I pay for two monthly subscriptions, one including Pro Tools. I'm using version 20, 21.7, and I also pay for a monthly plugin bundle. To locate these items, if we go to view my products, the first thing we see, a couple specials and things like that, promotional items. Here's my Avid Complete plugin bundle. Click on this link here, view software and downloads. Here's that for Mac, here's the rest of the plugins. If we scroll down a little further, Pro Tools subscription, view software, download and links. Here's the links for Mac. There is a Pro Tools demo session, which is really cool. You might wanna check it out. It lets you learn things a little more in depth on your own. And here's all the plugins that I have. Yeah, come on in. I wonder who that could be. Oh, what's up, Paul the fourth? Hey, what's up, Paul the fifth? How you doing, man? What's up, everybody? Just wanted to let you know that there is a new Pro Tools update. It came out last week. It's oh, 20, I think 21. I saw that point through my email. Yeah, I did. I think you might want to update to it. Okay, I think we should probably update to that. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So now that we understand a little bit of the workflow of the Avid website, let's take a look at the three versions of Pro Tools. If we go up here to Pro Tools, Overview, Music Software for Everyone. Pro Tools first. This is the most basic or watered down version, but it is free. You get a limited number of tracks and plugins that it comes with. No monthly fee though. Pro Tools, this is the version that I, along with a lot of other engineers, are utilizing. And then Pro Tools Ultimate, this was formerly known as Pro Tools HD. Pro Tools Ultimate is the cream of the crop. It's got the highest monthly subscription, highest overall perpetual license rate, 
And then you also have to have a lot of HD converters as well as HD interfaces. So when you get to that level, check it out. Me, I'm gonna stick with the standard Pro Tools. Well, now that there's an update, might as well update to it. So if we go to view my products, Pro Tools subscription, view software, download, and links. Pro Tools 2021.10 installer for Mac. Looks like this is about 1.83 gigs. So not huge, but takes up a little bit of space. So make sure you've got plenty of space either on your external hard drive or internal hard drive where are we gonna store this? 50% mark, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Cool, we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and take a look at the iLock website. That is ilok.com. You're gonna need to go ahead and create yourself a free account if you don't have one. You can do that by clicking right here. Just follow the prompts again. I've already got an iLock account. I'm gonna log in to show you some things here. All right, so it shows my name, email address, company. So the iLock is a USB dongle device. It allows you to store all your paid licenses and it coincides with Pro Tools. Here's my iLock. Here's a list of some of my licenses, 145 in total. Not a whole lot, but a decent amount. One thing you will need to download here is the iLock License Manager. This is gonna be an icon on your computer, two versions depending on your OS, Mac, Windows. And this icon is what your iLock License Manager looks like on your desktop. Let's open that, we'll sign in. So this is where all your paid plugins are found and the iLock over the air on the back end digitally coincides and talks to Pro Tools and once you have your iLock plugged in, it lets everything between the two programs know that everything is valid, it's licensed and legit. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple other things here. This is an iLock. It's an iLock 2. There's a newer one on the market now. It's an iLock 3. But what is this for? You'll have to plug this into your computer before you launch Pro Tools and it lets Avid know and the Pro Tools system know that any plugins that you may have purchased are licensed and legit to be used. You can pick these up on the iLock website, Amazon, Guitar Center, or Sweetwater as well. This is the iLock 2. It holds about 500 licenses, I believe, and the new one holds up to 1,500. Wow, it's also much faster on the download and transfer of licenses as well. Make sure to get yourself one. Let's go ahead and create our first session together. Before we create our session, there's one thing that I strongly recommend that you do. Please do not skip past this here. If you can, join me in your system settings. Right here, we'll see that I have a software update. It's highlighted with a red one there. Do not update to the newest version of OS. Monterey just came out. When I got this computer last year, it had Big Sur installed. Thankfully, everything seemed to work very smoothly. I haven't had any major issues. It is known in the audio profession and community that you should always wait a little bit before you update your software. If you happen to do this, you may run into some major, major issues. Some of your DAWs, maybe Pro Tools, Logic's gonna work of course, but Studio One, Reaper, Cubase, some of those DAWs may not be quite compatible with this new update. If you have any third-party plugins, they may not coincide or be compatible either. Please, for your sake, your mental stability, the emotional wrath that's gonna come with that, the folks at Avid Tech Support and Apple, please make sure that you have this unchecked. Turn it off. You will thank me at a later point in time. Now we are good to create this session. On my computer screen, you'll notice that on the left-hand side is where I keep my dock or all my icons. I do it there instead of on the bottom because I just find that it creates a much smoother and more efficient workflow for me. That's just a personal preference. But down here is what the Pro Tools icon looks like. If we click on File, Create New, we have some options. We can create a session. We can visit some recent ones. So here's some recent sessions that I've worked on. Projects. These are a list of over-the-air or cloud-based sessions. Let's go ahead and create this. I'm gonna call this Household Beats because I'm gonna create some beats out of some household items later on in this video. Right down here, a couple things to look at. Our sample rate, we have some options. Let's keep that at 48K. On our bit depth, let's put that at 24. Here's a quick lesson on saving things to an external hard drive. 
This is my Legacy Studios hard drive, but my suggestion is you label your session that has meaning for what the session is. Me, I'm gonna call this Household Beats. I also suggest that you put today's date or the date of when you record the session and some keywords. The reason for all that is when you go back to find your session at a later date, maybe it's tomorrow, in a few days, next week, or two months down the road, that way you can find your session. So let's title this Household Beats Today. We'll create that on my location. We'll create that on the LSN hard drive. We'll put a new folder of calling that Household Beats Create. Cool. There we go. It's as simple as that. This is defaulted to the mixer window. A key command to toggle to the other screen is command plus equals, making that a little larger. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the layout and then the workflow for Pro Tools. Up in the top corner here, we'll see our grid modes. We have shuffle, spot, slip, and grid. Three icons that you'll want to make sure that you have turned on or enabled. These three here, and you'll know that they're enabled to turn on because they're highlighted in blue. And these three icons are your trim tool, your selector tool, and your grabber tool. This is where you can see the start, the end, and the overall length of your song. This is your grid mode, nudge mode. This is an important icon. This is called your transport, but we'll talk about that a little more later. If we go to the top of our screen here, we see a down arrow. A few things you can turn on or off to your liking. Zoom controls, transport, MIDI control, synchronization. If you're an Ableton user, you can link things with Ableton. I don't use that. Personally, I do need to have my output meters on. That is a must. Let's go ahead and talk about our transport. What the heck is a transport? If you're old enough, old like me, if you can remember as a kid on a tape recorder or boombox, you had some buttons. You had a record button, you had a fast forward, rewind, and stop. That's essentially what your transport is, just in the digital version. To pull this up, you can do it two ways. If we go to our menu, we can go to window and transport. If you have a Mac keyboard, the key command is command one. Like on that tape recorder, we have some icons. This one here is return to zero, rewind, fast forward, go to end, stop, and R. Throughout previous videos, you may have heard me reference that as hitting that red R button. Here is where you can set your tempo. You have to do something first. You have to turn off that guy. That's your conductor. To turn it off, you simply click. If you want to change your tempo, click in there, type it in, and hit return. There we go. Wow, see, this is really pretty simple. Are you guys having fun? I'm really enjoying this whole process. A couple more things that I wanna talk about as far as layout goes. In the corner up here, we'll see that we've got this little circle in yellow. That's A to Z. If it's off, it's grayed out. Make sure to keep that on. It'll have a use coming up a little bit later on in the video. Sweet, so now we know some basic controls on the ins and outs of Pro Tools. Let's go ahead and talk types of tracks. Let me show you how to get this pulled up. You can do it in two ways. So if we go to our menu, we can go to track and new or key command shift command N. For now, we'll just do this. You've got two ways of recording tracks. You've got a mono and then you have stereo. Right here, here's the types of tracks. You have routing folders and basic folders. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of light tracks. You can put those together. Let's say you've got 10 tracks of drums. You can put those all in a folder. Let's say we have six tracks of guitars. You can put those all together. Maybe we have 10 tracks of keys, maybe including keyboard, piano, organ. You can put that all together. Let's say you have a whole bunch of vocal tracks. You can put those all together. Then we have your audio track and aux input. Sound familiar? Like in your vehicle, you can plug something into. So your aux input is where you're gonna put effects. Later on in the video, I'll record some vocals and let's say I wanna make it a little more spacious and sound bigger. Maybe we'll add some reverb to it. So here's my vocal track. Here's the aux. This is where the effects live. What we'll do, there's gonna be a send on the vocal track. We'll send the vocal track to the aux track. There's gonna be a return. So there's a fader there. And that's where we can control the actual amount of reverb or delay. We'll get into that in a little more detail coming up. Then we have your master fader, which controls everything on the session. Then you've got a VCA master, MIDI track, or instrument track. MIDI, musical instrument, digital interface, MIDI keyboard. Let's go ahead and create four audio tracks, four stereo aux inputs, and one master fader. We'll click on the four here. We'll add four additional tracks. We'll click four here. Instead of going to my toggle switch here, I can use a key command. Command right takes it from mono to stereo. Command down goes from audio track to aux input. 
We'll click again to add my master fader. Command right to make a mono stereo. Command down twice, make my master fader. It's really that simple, guys. Right now, we're currently on our audio screen. If you wanna check out what's going on in the mixer, we can do that with the key command. Command plus equals. Now that we're on the screen, and since I'm at home, I don't have my interface connected to my computer, so how do I tell it that I wanna record vocals with the internal microphone? or how to play things with the actual internal speakers. A couple ways we can do that. One thing you can do for overall general sound, if we go to your system preferences and click on the sound icon, you can use your MacBook Pro speakers, third party software or Pro Tools aggregate. There is a mute, sometimes things get muted, so if you're not getting any sound, it could be that. Here's your volume back to within Pro Tools. If we go to our menu on the top, if we go to Setup, let's take a look at I.O. first. That stands for Input and Output, and then we'll talk about speakers and microphone. If we go to I.O., there's three things that we'll want to do. On our inputs, outputs, and our bus, we're going to clear everything out, and then we'll set it back to default. Think of this as clearing out your history and cache on your computer from time to time. It's overall gonna just make things run a little bit smoother for you. If we go to Input, Command A, select all, delete. And same thing for output. Bus, command A, selects all, delete, is out. If we go to input, we'll go to default path, select that, okay. If we go to our bus, default path, okay. That's how you clear things out. Things will run a little more smoother for you. Then here's what we can do. If we go back up to setup, this time we'll go to playback engine. This is where you can change things. There's a drop down menu. We've got the Pro Tools aggregate again, the Black Hole, which is the third party software, MacBook Pro microphone or speakers. Let's put this on the microphone. Sometimes it'll do this. You just have to follow the prompts while it updates. Now we notice that there's no input or output. And if I try to hit the record button, it gives me that error. How do we fix that? Well, I'm gonna take a break, guys. I've been working on this all evening. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes. That's a nice fall dish. I'm rather hungry. I've been working on this project all evening. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes. So uh, I've got some boiling water and uh, just put some bacon up in this pan. It's gonna be sizzling. We'll use some of this, some of this audio for some of these beats. I'm gonna use this voice memos app to capture some audio of the uh, frying bacon. Cool. I think I can put that into a household beat somehow or another. Let's get these boiling potatoes drained. Right here, I've got my other iPhone to record the audio of the water getting strained. That definitely makes for some cool footage. A few ingredients that I like in my mashed potatoes, butter, ginger. Let's get these back in here. Garlic. Mm. Garlic, mashed potatoes, buttery, bacon, mushrooms, peppers. Mmm. Ah, oh, I love fall mashed potatoes more of a thanksgiving type of a dish but fried apples pretty soon i'm going to be making one of my favorite dishes and that's chicken noodle soup hot 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 the bacon grease the chives the pepper the mushrooms the butter the creamy mashed potatoes the tanginess and zestiness of the ginger Oh my gosh, this is to die for. Ah, all right, let's go ahead and get back into it. It's gonna be a little hard, it might be a little lethargic. So here's what we can do. We can use a combination of key commands and some routing. Here's a key command for you, Shift Option. This allows you to do multiple things to multiple tracks all at once. So let's build this from the ground up. On our outputs, let's push Shift Option, Stereo Bus 1 and 2. Hey, now we see we have some pan knobs. Let's hit the record button, what happens? Nothing yet. That's because we don't have an input selected. Key command, shift, option, interface, main, change everything to main. 
What happens if we hit our record button now? Ooh, we have signal. And my friends, that is how you change the routing issue. Now let's go ahead and talk about some game staging and recording an actual vocal track. All right, let's talk labeling tracks and game staging. Game changing, yes, game changing is a huge factor in gain staging. So what we'll do is label the first four channels, be one, two, three, and then four. As I said earlier, your auxes is where you put your effects. So I might add some more tracks here as well, but let's do this. All you have to do is double click. What we'll do is we'll put this as B1, command right, as B2, B3, and then beat four. And then on our aux one, we'll put beats, then we'll put reverb, and then delay. That's really all you have to do. Let's go ahead and record something. All right, so let's change our tempo from 120 to about 75. There we go. And one thing we'll want to do is create a click track so we keep everything to the <clears throat> Now this is one thing where there are no key commands. You actually have to go to track and go to the very bottom and create click track. It is time to make some household beats. I think what I'll do is do some finger snaps and use some other items around the apartment, record them and turn them into beats. Use some of that sizzling bacon from before. I love coffee. I loved it before Peter McKinnon made it popular. I had my first sip when I was only 17 years old. So let's go ahead and do this. So what the heck is game staging? Is it taking your bottle of washing detergent and putting it on a stage for everybody to see? Yeah, no. So gain staging is recording that incoming signal at a good level. Some recording engineers will say that's negative 12 dB, some will say negative 18. That's where I like to land a lot of times depending on instrumentation. Some will say negative 15. For visual purposes, let me show you what I'm talking about. We basically wanna have that signal coming in, making sure that our level's on green, just nudging that yellow. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll record enable B1, and we'll hit the record button on the transport. To go to the other screen, command plus equals. As we can see, my gain or my incoming signal is landing about negative 15 to negative 10. That's okay because I'm just doing a voiceover or some vocal tracking through my internal speakers. So we should be in good shape. Let's go back and do this. So what I'll do is I've got my click set to 75 beats per minute and I'll do some finger clicks and some things like that. I'll give myself four clicks, then we'll start recording. Cool, recorded eight measures, let's play that back. Let's go ahead and record some more elements to make this a little more unique. All right, I'm gonna take the filter, plop it in here, and record it with my voice recorder. Chocolate raspberry torch is a favorite of mine. I like things rather strong. Get the voice recorder out, and we'll pour. We'll get some water. Turn the recorder on. We'll pour this water in the coffee pot. Turn it on and we let it brew. All right, now we're making some good progress. Now let's pour a cup of joe and enjoy it. One thing about me, if you didn't know this already, I have hella major allergies. I'm allergic to pretty much everything outside. This is some OTC Kroger branded allergy meds. Let's go ahead and shake this bottle and record it. Cool. Eating mashed potatoes and drinking coffee is not the best combination for my stomach. If you can give me a few, I'll be right back. Let's spray some air freshener and capture some aerosol, shall we? <laughs> on beat three, let's record on this. We'll hit this on our transport return. <sighs> it's 
smells good in here anyways for the time being. Let's play that back. <laughs> Let's clip gang this a little bit. Okay, that was kind of hard to hear, so we'll have to do some major processing on that. Fun idea. I believe we have a decent amount of sounds captured and recorded for this household beat. There's one thing we need to do though. We've got to get some of those sounds from this phone to my laptop. Let me show you that process. It's rather simple. Step number one in this process, make sure that both of your devices are connected to Wi-Fi, preferably the same one. To get organized, I'll listen to this first recording. I think that was me opening up the bag of coffee. We'll hit these three dots and we'll share. And that's airdropping. We'll go to airdrop and then we'll go to my MacBook Pro. There it is. Accept. It puts it into downloads. We'll label this, rename, opening coffee. And we'll follow that same process for the remainder of these recordings. We just got everything airdropped from my phone to my laptop. So how do I get those files from my laptop into Pro Tools? Do I drag them over one by one? Well, you can if you have the patience for that. What I did was I created a folder. I called it Captured Audio for Pro Tools. Here's a key command to help you import things all at once. Shift Command I. It brings up a page like this. You can choose the selected drive, the Legacy Studios hard drive, go to options, and then we see all these folders. Under my file, you all, under this captured audio for Pro Tools. We'll open that, select, shift, open, might take a while, open, bam. So now it's doing its thing. So instead of dragging one over, one over, one over, it's doing them all at once in a matter of seconds. All right, so now I'm going to fiddle-faddle with these, listen to things, and try to make some sense of this madness. And uh, we'll see what happens. We're about to wrap things up here, but do you remember when I said if you look at the yellow outline, that's your A to Z right up here. That will allow you to make your screen a little bit bigger or smaller. Key command T makes things bigger. R brings them back to you. I'll put everything together. I got my MIDI keyboard out. I'll put some stuff together. And really, I think it's kind of lame, but let's just listen to it and see what you think. All right, now let's pour a cup of joe. And enjoy it. do when we're done with our session we've got a mix we want to bounce it or export it make it into an mp3 get it from there into itunes or onto our phone we can do this in two ways if we do it old school we can go to file and bounce mix key command is shift command b we'll do that keep the name the same file destination bounce files household beats today okay it's doing this thing cool Let's see if I can find it. Do you remember when I said it's important to label things so that way if you go to find it later on, you can find it? Here's what I'm talking about. If we go up here, we'll do household beats. Here it is, control, click, share, airdrop, Legacy Studios Nash iPhone, accept. I'll just save it to files, save. Again, thank you so much for watching. That's how I made some beats out of some household items. I know it was kind of silly, but at least it showed us the ins and outs of Pro Tools. If you found any value in this, I sure would appreciate those thumbs up. If you're new, 
smash that subscribe button, all that great stuff, because I've got a lot of cool things coming for you this fall. All right, guys, if you forgot my name, I'm not going to let you forget it. It's Paul the Fifth. Fifth.